Hi guys, Steve Girardi here. Welcome to Steve Strings. Today I have another unboxing and review video for you. In this case, we'll be looking at the Concert Scale Walnut Ukulele by Van Gogh. Van Gogh sent this instrument to me for review, and you can see here that it came a little beat up in the shipping, so hopefully the actual instrument came through unscathed. So let's get to it. All right, you can see that uh, it came in this nifty little box with a carrying handle. I've not seen that before. That's kind of nice because if you wanted to, uh, like, you know, ship this or have a little more protection than just a gig bag, that box with a handle kind of serves as like a little mini case. But let's go ahead and open this up and see what we have. All right. So you can see the Van Gogh up. comes with a gig bag and some other accessories in here as well. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at those. All right, we'll start off by looking at the accessories that come with this real quick. And this is a, looks like it's a fairly typical kind of a, a starter kit, ukulele. It has a, a, a tuner. It has a shoulder strap. It has an extra set of strings, which is always nice to have. It has a capo, and this one looks like it's a guitar sized capo, and it comes with a, a, a beginner's uh, ukulele guide, which is also kind of handy. And it looks like it has some picks that just hit the floor. <laughs> this is it does come with three picks, and they're Van Gogh branded, and you can see that they are there are different thicknesses. There's a very thin one, and then uh, uh, more rigid ones as you go up the line there. And then it also comes with a Van Gogh branded cleaning cloth as well. So accessories wise, this certainly has everything a raw beginner would need to get started. Let's go ahead and look at the gig bag. It looks like it's a typical sort of a canvas or Cordura type gig bag. And uh, you can see it does have the Van Gogh label on it, as well as this sort of nice orange trim. All right, and we'll look at the instrument here in a minute. But the gig bag, it has, oh, probably 10 millimeters worth of padding on it there. It's a basic gig bag. It has one shoulder strap and just a basic uh, webbing handle. Nothing fancy, but that'll certainly get the job done. All right, let's take a look at this instrument. So I've only seen this on pictures from the Amazon page. And again, this is a walnut instrument. And so let's take a look at that headstock there. You can see it has a laser etched Van Gogh logo. It looks like it has a veneer of walnut on the Okume neck. This has closed geared tuning machines with black uh, plastic uh, buttons on it. All right, and let's go ahead and get this off. Okay, all righty. And so here from looking at the fretboard, on the webpage, the fretboard is just described as wood. So from looking at this, I can't tell if that is rosewood, though it certainly looks like it. That certainly looks like a rosewood. You can see it does have position markers here on the face of the instrument, as well as position markers on the player side, which is nice. This does have a strap button at the heel of the neck and also here at the lower bow. And the neck shape is a fairly typical sort of a C shape to it not overly thick all right it is smooth and while I, I can feel the frets they do not feel sharp um, I'm looking to see if this has a bound fretboard and it looks like this this does not have a bound fretboard so the frets are set into them uh, the web page describes these as being brass frets although they don't look brass from here they look more of like a silver color to them and they have been dressed, and so, uh... All right, from looking at the grain on this instrument, it has, it looks like an open pour finish, sort of a matte finish. And the neck feels good. All right, okay, I'm just looking at some of these details. Lots of little details. Oh, I like that. Oh, okay, good. All right, let's go ahead and talk about this. 
So again, this has uh, a laminate walnut soundboard, sides and back. And it has a, a nice little grain to it. It's different than the typical sort of mahogany or sapele. If looking at the back here, you can probably see that this thing has a significant arch to it. And that should help with that projection. And also, plainly you can see here, it also has this sound port right here, which is nice because that means that more sounds coming right up toward the player and not so much going out. And you can also see here, of course, that it has these sort of uh, stylized F holes. And because of that, from looking inside, the bracing is slightly different than the typical. Um, this does not have ladder bracing across the back. And again, I believe that's because this arch design adds some rigidity to that, so it doesn't need bracing on the back. From looking at the inside, because of the F holes, it doesn't have um, the typical sort of uh, ladder bracing, but rather it has like a like a V or an, I guess an A, an A kind of a shape of bracing here going on inside. And from looking inside, yeah, there is a ladder brace across here. Yeah, so from looking at the bracing in here, there is a ladder brace going across here. Then there is like a sort of an A type of a brace here. And then underneath of the, um, the bridge, there is like a, a bridge plate underneath of that. And this has uh, screws that are positioning screws that put that in place. Again, from looking at the, at the bridge, it does also look like wood, perhaps rosewood. And it does appear to have plastic uh, saddle and a plastic nut. Um, it does have notched kerfing on the inside, and I'm, I'm not thinking you can see that. It's just too far in there. Yeah, it's too dark in there. But it does have notched kerfing, very neat and tidy in there. <clears throat> I also don't think I mentioned that. As you can see, this does have trim going around the body. And, of course, here on the soundboard, not only does it have trim, it also have lines of uh, black, white, and black uh, purfling, which I think is quite nice. I think that just, I think that adds class to any instrument when they have uh, real binding and purfling to go with that. <clears throat> so plainly, this is not in tune. So I'll go ahead and tune it up, uh, let the string settle for a bit, play it for a while, let those strings settle in, and then I'll come back and give you a sound sample. I have now brought this instrument up to pitch. I've been playing it for a while, letting the string settle, retuning, retuning, and it looks like they're settling in pretty well, but I'm sure they'll, they'll still be stretching for a while. Uh, while I did that, I went ahead and looked this instrument all over, looking for any finish flaws anywhere. I should say I found no finish flaws anywhere. There's no scratches, no dents, no pooling of finish. Um, it's a nice, clean finish. I also checked out the neck to make sure the neck is straight, and it is. It's arrow straight. There's no arch, no underbow. There's no twist, so the neck is good. I also checked the string action using my string action guide, and the string action is fairly low on this. At the first fret, it is uh, 0.25 millimeters, um, and at the 12th fret, it is 1.75 millimeters, so it's under two millimeters, very low action. Or that was, uh, what is it, point, uh, zero, two, zero at the first inches at the first fret and point zero, eight, zero at the 12th fret. So very low action, some people like that, uh, but I should say that there were some consequences to that, which I'll get to here in a minute. So let's go ahead and hear this. It has some decent sustain. A bit of a shimmer to it. It has a nice tone. I played a lot of um, like mahogany or, or I should say laminate mahogany or sapele instruments. And this has a different sound than that. This walnut has its unique tone. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and I'll do some finger picking and then some strumming and you'll get to see what this sounds like.
So let's go ahead and talk about that low X and some of the consequences of it. Um, I'll go ahead and start here on the 12th fret on the um, A string. And you can see there's some string buzz. So there is some string buzz. Uh, the good news is uh, that's that's easily fixed. Because the neck is nice and straight, there's no back bow. And I also looked uh, to see, I did a little fret rocking here to see if any high frets, and there weren't necessarily any particularly high frets. It looks like the action is just a skosh low for the movement of the strings. And the e there's an easy fix for that, and that is put a, a shim underneath of the saddle to bring it up. And my guess is if you bring it up, because this action right now is, like I said, 1.75 millimeters. And typically you like string action between like, you know, two, two and a half millimeters. So if you brought that up even a half a millimeter by putting a one millimeter shim under that saddle, that would bring this up. And I, I'm pretty confident that, that that buzz would go away. But my first impressions of this are very positive. I mean, uh, string action aside, um, this is a nice build. The fit and finish are good. The build is great. No sharp fret edges. Um, this uh, sound port here at the player side is unique, and I kind of like that. And I was checking the sound coming toward me from the sound port or coming toward me from the face, and it's different. I actually thought it would be louder coming to me from this sound port. But I think because of this arched back, I think it's throwing most of that sound right out through the front. Because it's, it's to me, it sounds louder in front of it when I play it like toward me than if I play it with the sound port toward me. But still, I like that little feature. It's kind of interesting. I hope you found today's unboxing and review video helpful. Uh, if you did, or if you like this instrument, please give a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of the review videos I do, as well as the instruments I build, please subscribe. I'd love to have you come back and see more of the, the videos that I do. Thanks for watching.